is 2 a.m. The release is scheduled for 2.30 a.m. and your team is frantically debugging a critical issue. Be honest, how many times has your team been in this situation? Maybe it's your first time. Maybe it's your 50th. Either way, let's play a quick game. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you right now that your release process is smooth, reliable, and disaster-proof? Take a second to think about it. Got your number? Hold on to it. Because by the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to boost that number to a 9, or maybe even a 10. No more chaos. No more last-minute fire drills. Let's dive into the world of DevOps release management and transform your process from stress-inducing to seamless. Here's the thing. If you've worked in tech for any amount of time, you know that release management can feel like playing Jenga during an earthquake. One wrong move and everything comes crashing down. Think about your last release. How did it go? Was there a clear plan? Or did it feel more like a wing it and hope for the best situation? Did you have proper testing in place? Or were you fixing bugs on the fly? And most importantly, did you sleep that night? Drop your experience in the comments. I'd love to hear how your team handles the chaos. The traditional way of managing releases, where development hands off code to QA, who then hands it off to operations, who then throws it into production, is broken. This siloed approach creates bottlenecks, miscommunication, and plenty of finger pointing when things inevitably go wrong. This is what I like to call the hot potato method of release management. Nobody wants to be holding the potato when it burns and your releases suffer for it. In a world where continuous integration and continuous delivery, or CI slash CD, are the new normal, this outdated approach simply can't keep up. The consequences are serious. Bugs slip into production. Rollbacks waste valuable time. Customer trust erodes. And worst of all, your team morale takes a massive hit. When release management is chaotic, everyone feels the stress. Now imagine a different approach. One where your release pipeline is smooth, efficient, and predictable. One where every step is clear, automated, and monitored. That's the promise of DevOps release management. And today, I'm breaking it down into three key pillars that will transform the way your team works, plan, automate, and monitor. And as we go, I want you to think about how these concepts can apply to your current workflow. Better yet, Take notes and start brainstorming changes you can make today. Let's start with planning. Now, I know what you're thinking. Planning? We already have planning meetings, sprint reviews, roadmaps. Do we really need more? But let me ask you this. How much of your planning focuses specifically on the release process itself? Most teams plan features, timelines, and goals, but they don't plan the mechanics of the release. And that's where problems begin. So here's your first challenge. For your next release, create a release governance framework. This is a structured checklist that covers three key questions. What are you releasing? How will you release it? And what's your fallback if things go wrong? Splunk has a great concept here, defining your minimum viable release. This means knowing the absolute minimum that needs to work perfectly before the release can go live. No guessing, no cutting corners, and absolutely no will fix it in production mindset. And don't stop at defining what you're releasing, plan your environment too. Does your staging environment mirror production? Are all dependencies accounted for? Drop a comment if you've ever had a release fail because of an environment mismatch. We've all been there. Next up, automation. Let's make this interactive. What's the most tedious, repetitive task in your current release process? Testing, environment setup, deployment, whatever it is, Type it into the comments right now. Now imagine if you could automate that task. Automation is the backbone of modern release management. It eliminates human error, speeds up the process, and makes your pipeline predictable. Jenkins, GitLab, and Zeet are just a few tools that can help you create a CI slash CD pipeline where every step from building to testing to deploying is automated. PMI refers to this as reliable, repeatable processes. I like to think of it as stress-proofing your pipeline. By automating tasks like regression testing, environment provisioning, and deployment validation, you're not just saving time, you're creating a system that works consistently every time. And let's not forget about infrastructure as code, or IAC. 
With tools like Terraform or CloudFormation, you can automate the setup and management of your cloud infrastructure. Need to spin up a new environment for testing? A few lines of code and you're done. Here's a pro tip, start small. Don't try to automate everything at once. Pick one task, just one, and figure out how to automate it. Maybe it's running automated tests every time new code is pushed. Or maybe it's creating a script for a simple deployment. Build from there, and before you know it, your entire pipeline will be running like clockwork. Finally, let's talk about monitoring. Quick question. After your last release, how closely did you monitor your application's performance? Did you have real-time dashboards, alerts, or did you wait for a flood of angry customer emails? Once your application is in production, you need to know how it's performing in real time. Are there latency issues? Is the system handling the expected load? Did you accidentally introduce any regressions? Monitoring tools like Splunk, Datadog, and Grafana give you the insights you need to answer these questions before they become full-blown problems. PMI calls this proactive monitoring. I call it peace of mind. Because when you know exactly what's happening in your system, you're in control, not the other way around. Monitoring isn't just about reacting to issues, it's about preventing them. Here's an exercise for you after this video, go check your app's performance metrics. Are there any trends or anomalies that stand out? If you don't already have a dashboard set up, start building one. And don't just monitor the app, monitor the release process itself. How long does each step take? Are there frequent failures in specific stages? Use this data to optimize. So what does effective release management in DevOps look like in practice? It's about clarity, automation, and vigilance. Plan with precision, automate everything you can, and monitor relentlessly. Get these pillars right, and you'll go from release night panic to release day confidence. Let me know in the comments which of these your team struggles with the most. I want to hear about your challenges and your wins. Here's my challenge to you. Pick one thing from this video to implement today. Maybe it's creating a release governance framework. Maybe it's automating a single step in your pipeline. Or maybe it's setting up a basic monitoring dashboard. Whatever it is, take action and let me know how it goes. Remember, you don't have to settle for chaos. You can take control of your releases, and I'm here to help you every step of the way. Found this valuable? Watch our playlists for more practical, executive-level insights on cloud architecture and digital transformation, and leading your business into the next era of growth. Simplify the cloud, amplify the impact.